David Paxson of World Population Balance. Since 1960, human population has doubled from 3 billion to over 6 billion people. Yet, all of Earth's resources have limits. Every time you hear this sound, the planet has another passenger. 140 more people are added every minute net gain. That's an increase of over 200,000 more every day and over 73 million more every year. At the same time, many of the world's resources are decreasing and hundreds of millions of people don't have enough food, water, and other basic needs to sustain a decent life. They struggle every day just to stay alive. Many world leaders understand that the greatest challenge we face is to humanely stop population growth before too many people deplete the resources that we all depend upon for keeping us alive. And many Minnesotans realize that population growth is a problem right here as well. When we talk about population growth, most people don't think about Minnesota. It's hard to see how population growth has had an impact on our state's natural resources. We're going to take you back in time and a little bit forward to show the effects of population growth on some of Minnesota's most important natural resources. On this map, each dot represents 5,000 people. This counter will show the year from 1850 to the present and beyond. To the right of the map, we'll show graphs of natural resources. As settlement begins in 1850, mining in the Iron Range has not yet begun, and the amount of topsoil is holding steady it's not eroding any faster than it can form. Let's start the clock. In the first few years of settlement, most counties are doubling their populations nearly every year. Topsoil is beginning to erode away as agriculture sweeps through the state. Let's look at wheat farming as an example of agriculture. Wheat farming is really catching on, so the native prairies forests and wetlands are converted into farmland. And the wheat's being made into flour by people who are moving into the cities. Mining is just beginning in the Iron Range. Iron is a non-renewable resource. There will never be more iron. Wheat farming reached its peak in 1900. Wow, look at the wheat graph drop. Other agriculture will take its place, but you can't sustain high productivity for very long. We've already mined more than a quarter of all the iron in the state. There are now twice as many people in the Twin Cities area as in other sections of the state. Where are they getting their food from? They can't be growing it all in the city. They're trucking it in from other places. We're losing topsoil faster every year. Half of all the iron in the state is gone now. As agriculture stabilizes and the iron runs out, more people are moving to the cities. Now there are three times more people in the Twin Cities area than in any other part of the state. Three-fourths of the iron is gone. Wheat farming looked so promising, and now look at it. It'll come back up shortly, but not for long. Why not for long? People want to use a lot of that land for other crops, and for houses and roads. So there are other crops that are doing better than wheat, like soybeans? Yes, but the soil is still eroding faster than ever, and crops need soil to grow. Nine-tenths of the iron is gone now. Look at how much soil we're losing now. Twelve times faster than new soil can form. How are we going to grow crops without soil? That's the end of the data for iron and wheat. Only 5% of the state's iron is still in the ground, and most of that is too expensive to mine. From here on out, nearly all the population growth is expected to be in the Twin Cities and St. Cloud regions. There's no more land now than there was in 1850, but that space has to produce our food, fuel, building materials, and take in all of our garbage, industrial scrap, and nuclear waste. If we've already got pollution today, what will Minnesota be like tomorrow when there are even more people sharing this space? All those people in the Twin Cities, there are as many people there as in the rest of the state combined, and they're still growing. Where does their food come from? From outside the cities. But we can't keep that up. We're losing our topsoil. Other states then, and other countries. 
So in order to have a big city in one place, there has to be a lot of land and other resources somewhere else in the world to support it. That's called an ecological footprint, the amount of land necessary to support a group of people. The footprint of the Twin Cities covers most of the state. I wonder how many other places are helping support Minnesota cities. And how many other countries it takes to support America. So remember, population growth is as much of an issue right here as it is in developing countries. It's not only a question of how many people, it's also how much each of us consumes. And each additional person makes our footprint bigger. In order for there to be enough topsoil, clean air, and clean water for future Minnesotans and Americans to live a decent life, we need to stop population growth and stop using our resources faster than they can be replenished. The trends we've seen in this video don't have to continue. You can help change them by becoming involved to stop population growth, both around the world and here at home.